Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Head to Head, or Head to Heads in this case. And uh, before we get into the meat of it, uh, to just reintroduce to many of the viewers, uh, friends of the show, uh, who we've had on before. Before we get cracking, though, I'll do the honours. And so, first of all, welcome back Ryan Lester, who writes uh, on football, who's a bit of an expert on the subject, even though he might blush, and a man with some very, very strong opinions on the, uh, on the matter of football. So, Ryan, welcome back, mate. Thanks for having me on, Bill. And football legend, Wolves hero, all-round top bloke, Mel Eves. Welcome back, Mel. Absolute pleasure, Bill. Great to be great to be on, and uh, and and with Ryan, who who I know very well through uh, through the football, through the through the press, the media, and um, yeah, top bloke as well. So yeah, really pleased to be on. Brilliant. Right then, lads. Well, we're on we're on a subject tonight that is going to be uh, not a problem for us to chat about. I think um, a bunch of three people together talking football always a good evening, but it's in these circumstances even more of a special occasion, really, because we've seen potentially the biggest change in football proposed and then rapidly retreated from in the space of two or three days and we're going to talk about that a little bit but we're also going to talk about where we go from here so first of all let's set the ball rolling european super league what a grand idea you get all the most powerful clubs in europe together you put them in a super league where they even if they come bottom they can't get relegated there's an opportunity uh, uh, for a three or four i think it was clubs to get promoted in during competition. But basically, the richest clubs always remain in this competition and to hell with the rest because they're far too good to have to qualify. They don't want to have to take the chance of maybe someone like, dare I say, the Wolves or in previous season, Burnley, certainly Leicester, uh, clubs like that, usurping them at the top table. They wanted to guarantee their place. And they told us, that this competition would guarantee the future of football. Now we know that they've taken a backward step and the whole thing is folding under fan pressure. But the idea itself, what do we think of the actual concept itself? I'll set the ball rolling by asking you that, Ryan. Just, just talking about the concept itself that they devised. Any merit to it whatsoever? Any thoughts on, on whether there might be something taken from that for the future? Or was it just a bunch of the rich boys trying to keep it all to themselves? I mean, first of all, the planet is hurting from COVID and they, they're going along like it's just them hurting when everyone's hurting, businesses are hurting, everyone's hurting. So I just think it's them. So they've used that as leverage to say, oh, we need to do this. We're struggling. We've done this. We've done that. But I mean... <laughs> Clubs, really respectable clubs previously, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Tottenham, Madrid, Barca, Real Madrid, Juventus, and, and, and both the Milans. It's disgusting behaviour. Creating a monopoly to keep all the money and potentially drown out clubs league by league. It's just, it's absolutely outrageous, Bill. And I think the audacity of these teams to do that. And then the gall of some of these teams as well, particularly like Spurs and Arsenal to accept it's just I'm, 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 I know we've gone full circle and recovered and football's come together, but I'm still outraged by this. And this is going to go on for a long time. And people like me, much more important than me, people who are involved in football, I'm not going to forget this. And Mel, as someone who, you know, during your career, you will have played against the super teams in, the, in England and scored, I'm sure, against a, a few of them. And you did have, I believe, a, a taste of European football. What are your your feelings on, on on what they were trying to do? Well, I'm not blaming me on Trumpy, but I think I scored. I think it was only only Tottenham. I didn't score against that the top six that you've just mentioned. So, um, I'll take that as a plus. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm I'm totally on the same page uh, as Ryan in the fact that what we what we what we're seeing is just mirroring what's actually happened in real life. In that the the big global corporations have taken off. If you look at it, all of the billionaires 
have made money out of this lockdown. It's the smaller, it's the small to medium sized companies, and it's the same with the football. They're trying to actually just uh, cut everybody else off, take all the money that's available, uh, as has happened in uh, outside of football. Because I don't think that they've these big these big clubs uh, have lost money. Certainly, the owners of these big clubs have. Got, don't just own the football clubs. They've got obviously lots of different funders and shareholders that are all involved with with everything else that, that, that's going on. And I think it's just a power grab. And the big thing that I'm really pleased about is that this has come out in the press. And the press, uh, I know the Corriella della Sport, I mean, Italy, they love their football. I've done loads of stuff with Italy uh, over the years. And it's... Talk about talk about a religion. The number one religion there is football. I can tell you, <laughs> and they they love their love their football. Um, they're so passionate. Um, they just absolutely th knocked it out the water straight away. The big th the other thing is that obviously, if you're looking at the strongest twelve teams in um, in Europe, you'd probably have PSG, but you'd also have the you, you're obviously talking about Bayern Munich as well. Um, but because in, in Germany, the clubs are protected because they're mainly they've got a, at least a 50 percent holding by the fans, which the Americ which the German Football Association and the governments. And it's it's you look at the German um, FA and everybody involved in Germany. They're all they're all past blooming players. They're all past very intelligent players. Um, that know the history of the clubs, that know that it's the fans and that and the clubs, their identity is uh, is with the people. And this is a big thing. And I'm so pleased because I know that um, somebody texted me, oh, the Super League, you know, and it's gone there. And I, went, I, and, and I think it was a few days ago before that. As soon as it come out, I said, I said, they've talked about this for years. It's been mooted. I said, they do it. I said, it's a funny timing. But I said, no way it's going to go through. No. And I no. called it. Uh, and then, obviously, I think it's the, today it's all just blown up in their face because of the reaction. Yeah. You know, we, we've had, uh, I know, Dion Dublin. We've had Gary Neville. So I can just name you two of the ex-footballers that I know have come out. I think it, pretty well everybody has. And um, I think it's – and it, they just couldn't keep the lid on it. and. I think it's caused one or two um, disruptions. They're all they're all eating humble pie, aren't they now? The, uh, well, they're trying you know, to. They're, they're trying, trying to. If we, if trying we to I, know, I think Woodward's had to go, hasn't he? Yes. Uh, they say from Man United. Um, I don't think he was the most popular anyway. <laughs> but <No>. um, <laughs> from <laughs> his, his track record's not that clever. But um, well, I think I think Mel, Mel is laying down sort of the, the, the whole gist of where we're going with the programme tonight in, in a lot of what he said there. Um, but just to just to focus a little bit more before we get on to things like the German model, which I think is fascinating, actually. But we, we, we'll discuss that as we go along. But I think, Ryan, my question really about this is they were trying, it would appear, to get rid of the element of competition from football, um, which it goes to the some of the stuff that Mel was talking about there, the, the ethics of the people involved in these clubs, who would have been quite happy, when I say involved at the top level, we're not talking about the fans or, or necessarily the managers, but would have been quite happy to buy their slot in this Super League and forget altogether about the ethos of competition and fairness. So I'd like you to comment on that. And also, as someone who is avidly interested and in, in, uh, times involved in the media, the fact that the Super League seemed to put this forward without having any media backing. And the first thing that happened was that people on Sky Sports attacked them. Now, I would have thought if you're going to do a Super League, you probably would have arranged a deal with a broadcaster first. <laughs> Otherwise, your PR situation is going to be a nightmare. So well, what do you think about the, the sporting ethics of the people who run these clubs and perhaps their lack of business now in forgetting the media? Well, I'll start with the second question first because it's the one freshest in my memory. But in terms of the the media business now, 
I don't think they've made contact with anybody in the UK because they're not interested in the UK customers. People, they're not going to be interested in that because that's not the market for this kind of thing. The, pe the main people who I've seen back in this, hardly anybody, if anyone at all in the UK, but we're talking fans in Asia, fans in Africa, and you can talk to support any team you want. That's great. I want Wolves to have fans all over the world. I want supporters all over the world. That's great. But, but English fans, ridiculously, weren't, weren't their target market. So what, I, I think that's why they've not targeted, because I think Sky and BT made it really clear they weren't interested. I don't know what Amazon Prime or, and I'm sure the BBC were against it as well, but I don't think there was a target market here. So so they were like, whatever, it just, we're, not, we're not bothered. Pay-per-views in Asia, Africa or, or uh, America, it's, that's what they're interested in, not the English fans. And that's for me, is an even more of a dismissal to us. Well, we're not even interested in your media because it's not what we're interested in. But going back to your first question now, I've managed to spit that one out. Um, in terms of sporting merit, obviously Mel's played at the, the very top. Um, I played at various levels, not not far from professional. But if I have a kick around with my mates at the park, I want to win, regardless if it's a laugh or not. I want to win heads and volleys. I want to win penalty shootouts. I play because I win. And that feeling of you want to win because you don't want to lose. You want the bragging rights. You want the smile. I want to win everything. It's because that's the competitor in me. And football fans go to win. And the battle to try and survive. Wolves um, under McCarthy went to the final game of the season against Blackburn Rovers. They were 3-0 down at home. Um, they got it back to 3-1. The fans were singing, we only need one goal. Got it back to 3-2. We lost, but the one goal kept us up. And then I think Spurs um, uh, scored against Birmingham and, and Wolves were safe anyway. But we, we play to compete. You, you earn the right to survive in the Premier League. You, you battle hard through 46 games and playoffs to get promoted from the Championship. You bust a gut through the season to get to seventh to play in the Europa League like Wolves did two years ago. That's what you do. That's what football's all about. Taking away any risk. There's no fun in that. What's the what's the point? Were you still going to get your 350 million for finishing bottom? It is it is disgusting. It is just outrageous. It is everything that against me as a person and multiple other fans stand for in football. I want to win and I want to earn that win. I want to earn the right to play against the best. And if we, you, you fail, you suffer the consequences and you, you start over and you try again. It's just, this is people that don't understand the traditions and what football is all about. We are not customers. Well, so, that's it, isn't it, Mel? I mean, you know, I mean, and you, during your career, you were involved in fight, I mean, you, you known as being one of the most competitive players. You fought relegation. You fought. You got promotion. You you, you fought for all for cups. That what Ryan said there. That that's spot on, isn't it? You take that element of needing to win, needing to succeed out of it. And, and what what is the game? Well, Ryan's made obviously spot on, um, and I could feel the passion when you were delivering that, um, Ryan. I th I think it's. It comes down to the essence of what is it all about, and it, it's significant that the the owners of um, Man United and Liverpool are, are from America, where there's a different ethos regarding sport and the t and and TV rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because that was, you know, the American football is the baseball, uh, basketball. They were multi millionaires when when I was playing and we were running two Bob, yeah. you know, because it had already got, it was already in their culture and already a model that has come, come through. So they, they probably think that's the way to do it. And I, I, I get it, Ryan, that, that even when Wolves went on pre-season, when I, I remember Man City were there as well. And uh, in, in China, because obviously Wolves have got Chinese owners. So, so wolves wolves selling um say one percent capacity of of shirts in china we could be 100 percent in the uk one mm. percent dwarfs 100 percent of the uk that's the thing in the fact that it's a massive market in asia which includes obviously massive in china and the the us and everywhere and ev and everywhere else so therefore little old uk that that 
they don't have to bother about the uh, sky or whatever. Um, and But th they've got to remember that they don't realise that this is all about supporters and working class people um, that, as I say, I've done, done so much, not just we are passionate about it, but I know how passionate I know how passionate um, the Germans are about the football. The Dutch, I've, I've been to the, over there. I know how passionate the, the Italians are for certain about it. Um, and that's why that. But from a business point of view, I can't understand why they haven't got. There was no. They got absolutely blasted down straight away by the by the media. Yeah, which is totally the opposite of of what's gone on. What's gone on uh, now, in my opinion, uh, is regards the media backing up the big corporations and not sticking up for the for the Joe Joe Bloggs in his corner shop, who's going to yeah. go out of business if he doesn't get somebody, you know, his usual customers coming in. But they can go ten yards down the road to the supermarket. Mm. Well, that's yeah, the odd thing uh, about but, it. but 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 it's the same it's the same thing with the football you know so it, it, and then and the other thing about oh well we'll look after everybody else yeah go on then <laughs> yeah well, you've got to, you've, so you I mean you've got to believe them because that none of them tell lies do they oh no it's never been no it's never no. been no Mel, you know no. that but, but one of the things I mean I, I do think this this lack of broadcast support although we work the markets I think it wouldn't have been very hard to have won some support. But but just to come back to your mouth for a second, because, we, you know, on the ethos of football, I remember conversations you and I have had in the past when you started out in professional football and, and some of the characters who were around that Wolves changing room that you were in. We're going back to some great names of, of English football who were there. And, I mean, these guys who you knew in those days, they must have been spinning like tops in their graves at the very thought of all this going on because they were of that traditional working-class football. Well, look, I heard I heard something about, I think it was on TalkSport earlier with Darren Goff, and he mentioned about the six the six teams that are supposed to call the big six um, in, in our country, the English clubs. Um. He's saying, I think they've got a short memory, these people that run these clubs. Um, the founders of the Football League were, in 1888, Accrington, Aston Villa, Blackburn, Bolton, Burnley, Derby, Everton, Notts County, Preston North End, Stoke, West Bromwich Albion and Wolverhampton Wanderers. And he went on to say that the first team to represent England or the first team to take part in European super competition in 1954 was Wolverhampton Wanderers when they took on virtually on their own the Hungarian national team that had beaten England 6-3 and Wolves beat them. Yes. Yeah, the first floodlit game on the TV was Wolves, and um, not any of the big six. No, that and are... that six, that Hungarian team had beaten England six three and seven one, as I, as I recall. Yeah, um, and, and this is the thing, Ryan. That the, this proposal wasn't just against the, the sporting ethos that you you spoke about so passionately, but it, it's. Stealing our heritage, stealing our cultural heritage in a sense, because if you exclude these famous names, and obviously we've got a Wolves bias here, but we know the other names who are there as well, even even the Albion, if anyone from the Albion is watching, you know, even them, you know, you exclude these kind of names from the big competition, or at least the chance of being in the big competition. And and I think you're you're stealing the history of football and what makes football the game that we we live and breathe. Well, I don't think they're ever going to steal our history because, as 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 Mel sort of so so well said, then in terms of our history, that the founding members, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Europe floodlit. No one's ever going to take that from us, and we we showed as a footballing nation, don't mess with our football teams. 
don't do not mess with our football teams because you will see what this means to us. I mean, like you said, like Mel said, regarding the backing from the press straight away, Twitter was has been absolutely gold the last few days. It has been chaos, absolute chaos, and it. I can't, I can't, I mean, I'd have no, I'd be ashamed to admit what my, my hours were on Twitter the last few days, but it has, I've contributed as much as I can. To I've been watching you. Yeah. And it's, I, it's, they're not going to take that away from us ever, Bill, even if they try again, because we've got a beautiful game. It's the game that we love. It's evolving. There's some things, obviously, we talked about VAR that we don't like, but it's forever evolving, evolving and changing. And you know what? If they want to start again, event again, and go away and start their own stuff, they can. But it's not going to be the same. It's not going to get the likes here. It might suit franchise people, but as we we keep going on about it, in terms of sporting merit, you earn trophies. You earn the big prize money. You earn that opportunity. You you know what I mean? You, you if if you finish seventeenth. And you, you've earned that right to play in the Premier League. You earn absolutely everything. A golden ticket to play within a league within a league is just, it's absolutely outrageous. I'm sorry for repeating myself, but it just, it sets it sets the fuse off again. And it just makes me so mad that these people have had the audacity to try and steal our game from us. Ridiculous. And I think we need to, we need to give a hat tip as well, don't we, to the fans of these big six, supposed big six clubs, because they've been against it as much as, as everyone else. And, and I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bounce this back to you, Ron, before I go back to, to Mel. But I think, you know, we, we do need to acknowledge those of us who, who support, you know, the less wealthy clubs. There's the supporters of Chelsea and, and Liverpool, Man United, etc., etc. They have kicked off about this as well. And they've shown that they care about the sporting oh, ethos. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's all of us coming together. And it's not just those of us on the outside shouting in. It's everyone, isn't it? Absolutely. Real football fans exist at every club, regardless of the success. And obviously, there's very there's much softer atmospheres at some of the bigger clubs because they've become wealthy. They've invited us in, in. They've attracted a certain type of fan. And that's fine if you want to go that way. That's totally fine. But there's still hardcore fans that go home and away every week. Average Joe cannot afford eight or nine away trips a year in another competition with astronomical prices. It's just it's just not sustainable. There's not a single hoop given for their fans at all. The fact they haven't contacted or spoke to any fan group whatsoever. So, yeah, credit to the, the Liverpool fans. I know I had a bit of two and four with some Liverpool fans, but a bit of friendly crossfire yesterday. But we, we agreed in the end. The Chelsea fans chanting before the game. That these are real football supporters. This is what it means to us. It's football is such a huge part of my life. It's been in Mel's life all throughout, and I know you've heard football as well, Bill. It's just that these fans, we've all got a voice, regardless of our club, Accrington, Warsaw, Wolves, whoever. We love our football team and we're not gonna let it happen. So, yes, credit to those top six fans. Well done. And that's right, isn't it, Mel? I mean, you, you played at various clubs during your career as well, and I think you're well well versed in understanding the football family, so to speak. Um, it, it has been a team effort, hasn't it, really? Everyone's pulled together. And one of the few things we can actually say in this day and age, we do all pull together. It's been actually quite beautiful to see football fans as one decrying this. Well, you've yeah, the what one set one set of uh, well, there's two sets of what you would call stakeholders in the game that haven't been mentioned that have also come out and were dead against it. That's the managers and the players. You yeah. know, they've nobody's come out and said, well, no, I thought, I, I think it's a good idea. It's a pity it hasn't gone ahead. The players, I know Rashford tweeted straight away before it did. It wasn't after the fact that, Oh, it's, it's now it's been thrown out. I'm okay to say something. It was straight away. Mourinho, yeah. we think, I know it was timing and everything, but he was he was he was bang uh, you know bang against it, um, and um, you know, good luck good luck to them. I, I mean, all of the uh, of all the the clubs, I did actually I, I did have time with one of the top six clubs at Manchester City when I left Wolves. I had six months with, at Man City. It was at the old main road, but, um, you know, and uh, proper, proper real supporters. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and they, they love it. They would have been, I know that the vast, vast majority, 
well, I'm, I, I would pretty well say all of Man City um, fans would be dead against it. And well, it's just the it's just the owners. And and as for your, your Chelsea of this world, they're just a fashionable little boutique club in London. That if it wasn't for Abramovich throwing absolutely cartloads of money at it, they wouldn't be anywhere near where they are. No, I'm just being honest. You 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 bang right, Mel. Absolutely. And what I so say, I was going to try to jump in then regarding Man City. Obviously, we're not at that level yet, and maybe we will one day. But they've been on a similar journey to us. They dropped down to they dropped down to League One, yeah. and and they were they, they, I can't remember, was it thirty five, thirty six thousand for a League One game? I mean, we had thirty two and sold out, but. That fan base never goes away. And mm. when you've been on that journey as a supporter, and don't get me wrong, Mel, I think you were covering it for WM at the time as well, but some of those trips to new grounds was great. I enjoyed that. But let's not forget where we've come from. Let's not forget that if that had gone wrong now, we could be sitting like, who, who's down there now? Um, Sunderland, massive club, stuck. Yeah. From mismanagement or whatever reason, they're stuck. Yeah. So let, let's... These clubs like Man City and maybe Wolves one day, don't forget where we've come from. Yes, you know what? That, does, that doesn't mean we can't just sit and be happy all the time. We want more success. But, yeah, let, let's not forget that. And that's why I think what you're saying about Man City is absolutely bang on. Yeah, well, the thing with football... It, go on, exactly, go on, Mel, go on. Sorry, Bill. Exactly this. And, yeah, to, to back that up, you see, you see, Man, Man, Man City have had a similar, similar, similar journey, great club. Uh, love, love my time there. Got a lot of time for it, all the people there, and I still get remembered when I go back, even though I was only there a short time. You know, and it's great. And uh, I tell you what, they know, they know that they wouldn't be anywhere near what they are if it wasn't for state. Basically, they've been bought by a flipping country, haven't they? They got, they've got, they've got the state wealth behind them, which is like if you've got bottomless pit. Of, blooming money that you can throw at it and that's what city have had now they had that before oh now we've got now we've cornered the market we'll 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 bring some financial pl fair play rules in to stop yes. everybody to stop anybody else catching us up exactly and this is this is the thing i was going to bring us on to the rules <laughs> around football at the moment are absolutely crazy in terms of they're set by these big boys and, and this is where i think we perhaps ought to talk about how we can go forward from here because these big boys have played their cards too soon on this one and they've they've ended up with egg on their face for the first time in a very long time now as mel you so rightly put it they spent a fortune on these clubs and then brought in rules to stop anyone else being able to do it which uh, absolutely blatant but not only that when someone does break the rules they get some very serious punishments don't they we can look at sides that have had points deducted we can see sides that have been dropped down divisions all sorts of punishments now as these big boys were sitting on the around the table when these harsh penalties were imposed on other people but now they're saying it's not really fair to put penalties on us because that would be punishing the fans. I'll start with you, Mel. Do you think there should be some repercussions or are they right? It's not fair on the fans and let's just uh, forgive and forget and move on. So, Look, I'm not sure exactly what, what can be done or what should be done. All I know is that um, it, this shouldn't... What they'll attempt to do is... Eat some humble pie. So, oh, we're terribly sorry, but please, please keep coming and 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 uh, love us. Don't 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 say anything bad about us anymore. We want to just slip back into our, you know, slip back into the blooming side of the gutter where they come from. The fact that they're multi billionaires doesn't. They're just basically um, they're horrible pieces of work that happen to that happen to be very rich, horrible pieces of work. That's the that's and I'm just saying it is. Yeah, you know. And and it's a bit like somebody, you know, we've all seen it. Some idiot um, might win win the national lottery or something, and suddenly become a millionaire. It doesn't mean to say that oh, he's a millionaire. He's a nice person. No, if he's an if he's an he's just he's just a millionaire. That's he's just a rich 
idiot, not, <laughs> not a nice person. And so they're just showing their cards now that the owners of some of, not all of the owners, I'm sure, but some of the owners, and I know that uh, you, you speak to a lot of them, Man United fans, they're not, they're not happy with their owners. <laughs> they no. haven't been since, they haven't been since the start. No. Um, and they've been one, one uh, I know that one of the ones, one of their family, fam, that family has been leading the, the charge for this super league. As well as the guy from, I think it's Real Madrid, isn't it, or yeah. whatever? But, but, uh, and uh, they they just get so arrogant, they get too arrogant, and I think they've got that was the it was the arrogance that has undone them very very quickly. They haven't even really got off first base yes. because it's the arrogance that they thought that we're just untouchable because we've got, we can buy anybody off. We want to, but they forgot to buy the, they forgot to, they didn't, they didn't, they got too arrogant. They they thought that they were going to do it. Yeah. Well, Ryan, I can see you champing at the bit on this one. I've, I've a feeling you're going to be very mild mannered and forgiving of everything that's happened. Uh, just to, to give a, an update, because this is something I've always wanted to do along the ticker tag at the bottom, Tottenham are currently winning two, one against Southampton. Uh, so one of the superstar sides is beating one of us ordinary sides at the moment. Uh, but on this occasion, I hope everyone will forgive me for saying, go on, you Saints. Ryan, just, what, oh, go on, Mel. Before, 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 you, before you pass it over to Ryan, before you pass the talking stick over to Ryan, I just yeah. want to make one point quickly. Yeah. Man City were were abs were um, castigated and were ruled out of Europe for two up to two seasons, weren't they? Yeah. Not so long ago. And until that got me seen until they appealed. And then suddenly it just went away. And you're thinking, so, but nobody, uh, exactly. But nobody's yeah. seen any, anything, any, sorry, where's the, where is the reasoning behind that? Could you, what, is there a, is there a, a, a document that says, uh, we got it told, we were totally over the top or we got it wrong to start with. And this is why. Now it was just, well, we've, they've won their appeal. That was it. And it was just got swept under the carpet, didn't it? Well, I think we better, we better Sheffield, let Ryan... Chef, Sheffield Wednesday, six-point yeah. deduction. That she Sheffield Wednesday, who are, you know, and I played for Sheffield United, but I know how big a club Sheffield Wednesday is in the yeah. football, football world. You know, they had points deducted from them. I don't know what for. Probably for a, a minuscule <laughs> amount of what Man City are flipping... Have, Not even was close. Was exactly was supposed to have uh, been uh, to have done. Right, Ryan, over to, you're off over the, to you, off, over yeah. to you, Mister Lester. You're off the leaf, Ryan. Come on, give, uh, give, give us. For I, can it. See, I can see the rage building. You've gone red. Well, I, I, I've, become, I've been doing some unhealthy reading in terms of the Premier League rules and reading articles. And Premier League rule L nine clearly states. Any, men, any Premier League member needs prior written approval by the board to enter a new competition, not to start in it, but to enter it. And they've all signed up to enter it. So, one, and you, you're putting all over your Facebook and your Twitter, we are a founding member of blah, blah, blah. We're a founding member. You've already admitted that you're guilty. So the Premier League rules state you cannot join another league without Premier League position uh, uh, permission. You didn't get that. So you've already admitted it. And a second admission of guilt is you've retracted it and you've changed your mind because you've crapped yourself a little bit because you've seen how people feel. So you've already admitted you're guilty. And what I don't buy either, and this is, this is maybe a little bit harsh, but if they start playing the emotional card, it's not fair on players. It's not fair on the manager. Well, I want to know what people thought about when Wigan, Bolton, Bury, Birmingham City, Rotherham were all deducted points. And no one said anything about their fans then or their players or their manager. Just because they're small doesn't mean they should be treated differently. It's There needs to be punishment because if there isn't, they won't learn and it will happen again. There'll be some tweak where it's a little bit softer and they might offer a promotion or relegation into the Super League, whatever. I don't think this is over. Unless the Premier League... And the 14 remaining clubs put their foot down and insist, absolutely insist on some repercussions. It could happen again. 
We need to put our foot down, protect our game, protect our football clubs, protect our Warsaws, protect our Solio Moors, protect the football pyramid. It cannot happen again. And any sympathy vote, but the fans or the players or the manager, well, I'm, I'm sorry, it isn't their fault. But at what point do we say it's OK? We can't say, oh, let us, you know, it doesn't matter. It does matter. But what you say about Man City, that's a really interesting thing. Banned for two years. I think there was a substantial fine or maybe a transfer embargo as well. I think they still had a transfer embargo. I think that's what happened. But they, they cannot go unpunished. They cannot. And out this season, I think that's a bit much this season because most people have earned where they are this season and that's fine. And I don't think that it should impact this year. What I do think it should impact is the start of next season and have an equal points deduction. What was I thinking? Think minus 21 points, something like that? Well, I, 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 in, term, in terms of the maths, I, I don't really know what, what the scale is and what the maximum, what the minimum is, but I think it needs to be in, enough to let them know, don't do that again. I think it needs to be enough. I think a 5 million, 10 million, 20 million round gesture is nothing to these clubs. Oh, no. I think being out of Europe for a year would hurt them, but it would also hurt the Champions League more than it would, and it would hurt us as fans. So I don't, I, I don't think that's on as a whole a transfer embargo, maybe, but it's not transfer related, so I don't think they can do that. I think the only way they can hurt them by breaking the rules is hurting them in the Premier League next season with a with a points deduction. I don't know, but let's see. Mel, what do you think? What what should the the punishment, if any, be to these clubs? There should be punishment. I mean, it, I'm I'm just going to throw another another name out of a club, and just think at the difference with the way that they, you know, the way that they've been treated, Berry or Bury. Football club. Yeah, I thought the the way that Bury, Bury were were treated was absolutely despicable. Didn't give them a chance, Mel. They didn't give them a Either, chance. Yeah, but this is all this is all this is all picking on the little people. If you've got the you've got if 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 um if you've got multi billionaire owners. Oh, they'll pick on you. They'll give you a little bit of a fine, but there's nothing that's going to hurt you. Because as soon as you're trying to do that, then you think, why? And then yeah. I will, I'll be, I'll tell you, it's all corrupt. It's basically people buy people off. I was involved as a football agent for many, many years, and I stopped being a football agent six years ago. But I knew about Set Blatter and FIFA and what was going on. Um, but Totally and utterly corrupt. So and is the problem bigger than, than what's just happened? Do, do we need to absolutely. overhaul well, that's a everything to do with football? <laughs> I know. So I'm into this now. I'm enjoying no, this one. The thing is, it's 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 endemic, and you've got to get you've got to get a clear playing field, and you've got to, it's everything's got to be more transparent, um, and there has to be people held to account. But when you've got when you've got You've got to then look at organisations. Um, you, you had the, you had a situation where you've got the Premier League. Have done the same thing, really, didn't they? It's a breakaway. Yeah. You got your, your clubs. We're going to form. A, we're going to form a Premier League. Well, why was that was done? What was the need for that? One thing yeah. I jump in with that, Mel, is with the Premier League. And you're right. It was a breakaway, and it was money motivated. But everybody's got a chance to play in the Premier League, and everyone's really. Well, no. I'm, so, just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, but you've hit the, re the the reason that we can put up with it, and there wasn't as big a there wasn't the backlash. It was because people don't human beings. We're creatures of habit. We don't like change anyway because it was a change. But all it's done is just refigure it. And now you've got Division One, which I played in, and and when you won Division One, you went, you you could win the European Cup because you were in Europe. Um. Division one's now division is, is my, when I play, it's the division three <laughs> because yeah. they've just they've just renamed things, but it's a bit like that's a branding exercise, isn't it, or, yeah. or a, an ad, a marketing exercise, really. So and they do that they do that in different leagues and what have you. So once everybody knows that it's branding exercises and what's happening and where people really are and what the levels are, that's fine. Just get as because then. People just catch on, and uh, but there's just a resistance to change early on. But um, how I, I think that they've got to be hit um, in in some way. Um, if 
if you've got a, a situation where you know people have signed up for things and then gone behind people's backs um but it's again it's a bit like it's a bit like anything in in normal life your your big multinationals don't get flip, don't get found out or fined or if they do they just they just agree something out of court a few mm. mi you know m millions and whatever which is nothing to them compared to the billions or trillions that they make but your average joe it can put them out of business yeah. and they just stamp on people and so that's we got the same situation with football so how do we stand up to that um and you've it's got to be it's got to be everybody has to vote with their feet our man our man city liverpool are the supporters willing not to support not to support their club until things change well, that's that's a really good point. And, and Ryan, Mel's blown the lid off this conversation now. He's taken it into a new stratosphere because whilst we've now got the, the you know, this this example of dodgy dealing, let's put it nicely, that we've found, should we not look at the whole setup of football? Should we not try and bring it back to being a sport rather than a business? Should we look at the potential, and I have to say potential, just in case any solicitors are watching, corruption out there? Should oh, yeah. we look at should we look at the whole thing, or or are we or are we taking that too far? Should we just just focus on these handful of clubs who've been naughty boys? I think it's one step at a time. I think like the can of worms with that is potentially enormous. Again, you might not find anything at all, but there's a possibility that you will. So for at the moment, I think we should deal with the problem in front of us, and that's teams being punished for just trying to live in a world of greed where them six then become untouchable forever and any other team just can't get near them. It's just not possible to pay the wages or the transfers. So it needs investigating and going back to it again, these teams need punishing somehow. And I'm sorry if that's upset fans or anyone of that, but you could say, well, it's not the player's fault. Well, it's not my fault and I'm a fan. You know what I mean? It's Mel's an ex-player and a pundit. It's not, it's not his fault. You know what I mean? It's someone's fault. And if you're responsible for running a football club, then you must pay the repercussions. And if that's your club being punished because of what you've done, then you've got to live with that. And then if your fans turn on you, then that's your own fault. So it needs to happen. And that way then, if the punishment is severe enough and the fans go bananas, those people will be asked to leave those clubs. I mean, Carragher and Neville have been brilliant the last two nights. Absolutely outstanding. Gary Neville has just, I mean... I was. I don't usually watch. I usually turn it on when the game starts. I had to listen to that the last two nights. It has been brilliant. So, does it need investigating deeper? I, I think so. I think someone in terms of an independent Gary Neville said in terms of an independent adjudicator coming in to look at things where they're paid totally separately. They're a separate body and they look at things and then we can think eventually sort of look at the German fifty-one plus rule. I think we can maybe try and attempt to do in the next 10 or 15 years i think to implement that straight away would be impossible in terms of like the money that clubs are worth and that but it's certainly starting with having voted in fans representatives at each club would be a start now they don't get a say in transfers and things like that but in terms of having a voice at the table where they the people have to listen and they represent the fans i think that would be the first step in, in cutting this kind of thing out well you, you've led us on to this right and, and the, i'm gonna i'm gonna Follow it up with you before I, I, I let loose, Mel loose on this one. Because the German way of doing football is, is very different. And, that, and that's one of the reasons, it's probably not the reason no German club agreed to join the Super League. Because they have got this rule where 51% of the holding is with the fans. Now, I can see merits to that because you would never get a situation like this again. But you've just said they wouldn't have a say in transfers, but they would have the say in the running of a multi-million pound business. How would that work necessarily? Uh, I mean, German clubs don't have the same funding as English clubs. English clubs are amongst the richest in the world. You really think that if we get 51% of guys off the South Bank who are having a say in the way that the clubs are run, they would be able to run them effectively? Well, I think every fan is entitled to an opinion whether the, the, the ability of certain fans may be different to others in terms of making business decisions. And that's why you would have it as a vote. You would you would put yourself up in that position if you wanted to be a certain representative and you could have a vote and, and you, we could, you could do broadcasts, you could do 
I don't know how they get elected on there, but it certainly wouldn't be, oh, the club wouldn't get to pick, the fans would get to pick who goes on there and represents them and their views. And I think that way then the fans would elect the most suitable people, not just anybody can come on and have 5,000 representatives. You would have a selection of a couple of fans representing different different parts of the ground, different parts of different fan bases. But what you said, I, I don't think, I mean, I'd probably include that in myself in terms of anybody just going in and running a football club. You, you, you need, I mean, but as Mel said, in terms of the German thing, there's, there's some highly educated ex-players out there. There's also some very highly educated footballers, and I think we were one of them today. So there's some, there's some smart footballers out there that are more than capable of helping run a football club. So in terms of a fan base, I believe every fan base has enough about them to help assist running a football club. Mel, you're a, you're a well-travelled man in terms of the football world. Um, your view on this and and in general sports, clubs be, and how they run. The big thing is that I believe there has to be more accountability. We've had farcical situations with the governing of the FA itself, and yet they're pontificating on the running of football clubs. It's farcical, Bill. We have to get more accountability. There has to be more transparency, and there has to be more... Um, that they have to be held accountable and they're not in my opinion so the system itself there's in my, what i found in in my career as both a, a, a player then an agent for 20 years and then commenting as i do on the radio and i write a column for the paper uh, the mercury on a sunday i have i i i look at it and i'm thinking well Certain people aren't fit to do the jobs they are, but they get in there because of the people that they know instead of actually being capable of doing the job. And it's yeah. really an old boys club that needs to get sorted out. We've had this in rugby. I know the Will Carlin uh, famous, you know, the old, uh, the old farts have got to get sorted out. Because people get, but that was the same. That's been the same with the FA. It's been, um, and everything has to get sorted out. And there's too much in our system. We've got too many good people, because the vast majority of people, ultimately at their core, are fans. They're doing really good jobs, and um, they want to do the right thing. But they're caught in a bad system. And it's the system that needs tweaking. I'm not saying it's it doesn't need totally ripping up, but it does need sorting out at the very top. Well, and football we could is be the we curve could... on this, isn't it? Football because cricket in the in the eighties had Ian Botham saying something similar to the old farts comments. And and you look at cricket now and it's it's changed beyond recognition, really. Rugby, the Will Carlin thing. Mel, you've been involved at so many levels within football uh, on the business side and the playing side. If you had to put yourself on the spot, where, where would you go from here? How would this change that I think we all agree needs to be looked at? Where would we start? Well, it needs to be started from the from the very top, from the from government, which needs which needs change in itself. So it, it and and then you're talking about the the ministers in charge of sport and what have you have to be braver. They they actually backed down from making decisions and just covered various things up in the last few years. Anyway, there's a surprise. <laughs> so because they talk about various things, you get some really good people come up and say the right things. Um, I know a few years about the FA, but have things changed? No. no, it just goes quiet for a bit. In other words, keep your heads down a bit, lads. You know, look, I've told you off, play the game, and then they keep the jobs. There's no, there's no, there's, 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 there's no what you would call independent body that, um, that, that can see what's going on and therefore can keep an eye on it properly and has the, the clout. Such as a, you know, a, a, 
supreme judge or what, whatever or judges or a panel or whatever but that's got to come from the very top and that 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 sorry there's checks and balances there aren't because yeah. the people that then have to make the decisions at the very top oh we've got this what happened because i've written about this a few times this is why you've had you've had the, the situation with the you know with the abuse of, of kids in the game People at the FA knew about this 20, 30 years before it actually they actually did something about it. And we, I know we're going slightly off the track there, but I'm just going on about yeah. being accountable. It's the same thing. It's the yeah. same thing. I'm not, uh, you know, it's it's really now we have to grasp that somebody, the people at the FA, people in government who were in charge of the uh, sport. The number one sport that, that we are the creators of the world's of the beautiful game. We've brought this game to the world. We have a responsibility to actually do the right thing. And yes. people have to grasp the nettle. And if some politicians have got the have got the balls to actually do it, they'd get they'd be voted into office and you'd have virtually all the people behind you. Yeah. Well, politicians with balls, that's that's an interesting subject. One for another time now. I think, I think, I think we, we might have a harder time finding any. But, um, Ryan, what, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, is Mel right? Government government intervention to change the, the system, which probably would require government to be changed in itself, really. I mean, are, are, we, are we going at this at the right angle, or do you think there's another approach? Yeah, I mean... The Obviously, the government is very powerful, and if they want to lean on an organisation and, and make a tweak and insist on certain bits more of transparency and a bit more consistency, they can. And I believe that should happen. So I'm, I'm not au fait enough on the rules of, of how deep they can go, but something certainly needs to happen. Like as, as Mel said, this is our game, and we have to protect it. We have to protect it because this is the – I mean, the establishment of the Premier League, I think, in 91, 92, around then, was – that it was money based, but in many ways that has benefited football a lot. I, I think the product is is great, and I've got no issue with that. And I don't mind players or anyone being rich from the game. If you're great, you should be rewarded for it. Anyway, I'm I'm, 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 I'm I'm digressing, but um, it does need looking at. And as in terms of having a set of balls, let's see if the Premier League have got a set of balls regarding these six teams. That's the first thing that needs to be done. And if they don't act, the government will then look and go, hang on, well, let's look at all the other little clubs that have had their arses kicked for things much smaller than this. Things, financial trouble, playing a, playing a sub that wasn't registered. Teams have lost points for stuff like that. Like, as I mentioned earlier on, like Bury, Bolton, Rotherham, uh, something less severe than what's going on now. A total rule breaker that could have jeopardised football. So... The Premier League have got an opportunity to make <clears throat> me and Mel eat our words here and go, well, actually, you know what? They're going to take control now. The yeah. government don't need to step in or insist on something happens here. They've got some balls and they've dealt with this correctly. I don't think it will, but I think the other 14 teams, whether I don't think they'd like to admit it, but I think most of them would like to see it happen. There's even fans like Gary Neville, and I've mentioned his name a few times, of those clubs that are saying these teams deserve a punishment. They deserve it to let them know they cannot do to th this to our game. Yeah. And look, we've, we've dished out some aggro and some 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 negative vibes for, for all the right reasons tonight. But let's, let's use the last few minutes on a positive one. Um, and I'm talking a positive as well, just to reinforce what's going across the bar on the bottom of the screen next week. If you want to join and watch next week, I'm joined by Andrea Jenkins, MP, and Lawrence Fox. So that should be interesting. Let's see if they what their views are on football as well. But we are discussing wokeness next week. Um, and I don't think I'm on a very woke panel tonight either, but I won't speak for you, chaps. <laughs> right. Um, Brian, positive stuff now, and I'll come to Mel to finish this off. It's the Euros coming up. We've got an England team full of vim and vigour, full of youthful skills. I know that you've got... I've seen on your Twitter that you've got a lot of uh, positive opinion about this England team. What do you think? How far are we going to go? What, what, how do you think the summer will treat us? OK, well, this is going to be England's year. And I know I say that every tournament. There is never going to be a bigger opportunity. There is no team in Europe that's in form. 
Germany, Spain, they've all had upsets of results. This is the opportunity for England to win a major tournament in, in, my, in my lifetime. There's an opportunity here. And I think England keep Kane fit. The way he's playing this season, I mean, it's a, I don't know what's going on with Grealish, but I'd love to see him now. I'm not sure he will be now. But Kane, and what I would say, I know, I know there's a few minutes left, so I'll, I'll jump on quickly and, and say this, but what's happened the last few days has pulled football fans in England together like they've never been before. This never, this only ever usually happens before a World Cup or during a World Cup or Euros. What's happened has, has really united the football fans of this country. And if we can take this passion and that drive and feed that to the national team, I'm telling you now, I genuinely believe that England can come home with some, with some, with some silverware this summer. Mel, it's coming home in the summer. We're going to win the Euros. I agree with Ryan. I, I think we've got as good a chance as any. I, I'm really impressed with what Gareth Southgate has done. There is there is a, a group of really good, promising young lads in their probably their early 20s. Um, lots of energy about the team um, and and the squad. He's, he's, his hardest job is actually whittling down the squad, not actually to find finding players that can do it for us. It's it's knowing out who to leave out um, because there is a, we have got some really good, exciting young players um, that, that that I think, yeah, and and, and the normal the normal people like uh, countries that you would expect Germany, Spain, uh, Portugal, obviously Belgium because they're the world's rank uh, top ranking team and what have you, and France. Um, yeah, I th 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 we could we, we we could upset them. We could upset them because nobody's flying. They're all they they're not um, you know they're not they're not unbeatable at all. And we, we if we get everything right, get everything behind us, and just 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 hit the ground running, we could uh, we could upset a lot of people. Um, and and, uh, and I just, think just just to, to wind Ryan up a bit here as well, Mel. Because uh, I know he's very passionate about this subject as well. Would you go in with three centre backs or four four two? Um, oh. I don't. Want, I, I, I really, I really think that um, it's eleven against eleven and formations. Uh, formations. However, you want to play formations. It's about players. It's about players. What they do. You could play one at the back if he's the world's best player and he covers everything and he does what he d does what he needs to do. You could play Portuguese. one. You could play. You could play one. One, two, five, four. You can play. You can play anything. You can play. I, I, I don't really believe that if, if England, England's biggest strength is their attacking players. Go with an attacking team, outgun teams. No one's got a forward line like us. Let's go. And, and it's, I, I know well, Gareth Southgate's defensive, but let's attack teams and go at them. Well, what you've got to do is you've just got to give yourself. You've got to give yourself a chance. The first thing that you've got to do in football is be difficult to play against. And be yeah. difficult to beat. Um, that doesn't mean being defensive. It means you, exactly what we said. But if you've got players that will run their socks off, will compete, and will give sweat every last drop of blooming blood for you, and you've got the ability that that, that a lot of these young lads have now, um, you, you know, you, uh, we hope. You know, we hope Harry Kane's fit because he is a big. He's a bit like Jimenez for Wolves, isn't he? I mean, it's he, like, you know, you, you, he's such a big miss if if Kane's not fully fit, uh, fully fit for the Euros. Uh, Jack Grealish, we'd love to be involved because he's a special talent. But there's loads. There's quite a few of them. S Sterling, Sterling, Rashford. You've got then got you've, got you've got Foden. You've got Mount. They're all. We've got some real attacking. You know, attacking players that can unlock any team in any team in the world, and a standing defender in Conor Cody as well. And we've got, yeah, we've got your best centre back in the world, Conor Conor Cody. <laughs> and, and 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 there you go. And uh, three at the back. You've got <laughs> yeah. really good. You've got really good attacking uh, fullbacks or wing backs, however you yeah. want to play, whatever you want to call them, on both sides. I mean, that's a big. There's challenges for positions all over the pitch. That's why I say Gareth Gareth Southgate has got a a real, real problem in in channeling down to 
it, the twenty is it twenty three in the squad? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever the whatever the squad number is, I think it's twenty three. Um, is from about thirty. He's got at least thirty odd players that I think we could all mention that I've got a really good shout about being in the in the squad. But uh, that's his first thing, and then whittling that down to his best his best team. Well, I've been a bit naughty starting that one off right at the end, so because uh, I, I could have carried us going on there. And I've just become aware of the time because I, I, I really would have liked to go on for another hour to discuss the, the merits of uh, the England squad and whether we should, what formation. Well, we that's play. well, but, we, we uh, look for, we look forward to joining you on some future occasion with that, Bill. Well, we can do that. We can. We, I, think, I think as we go in, go in towards the uh, Euros, I think we can discuss that and we can we can debunk Ryan's theory about attack, 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 and, and, and do some miserable defensive talk. Uh, so there's there's a challenge for you, Ryan, if, uh, as and when we can do this. Ready again. and waiting. It's I all like about it. it's all about getting the balance right. You've got to be able to do the two things. Um, there's no no good losing a game eight seven. No, no. So it might, might be might be fun to watch. <laughs> It'll be fun to watch, but. <laughs> Um, you yeah. better, you better win in every game one nil. Although you don't want to win every game one nil, don't get me. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you've just got to get the balance right. It's like with anything. Exactly. Great if we if you can come out all guns blazing, and you, uh, which I'm sure we will do. You know if if but you, it depends who you if if the opposition if the opposition are exploitable, that's what we should be doing. But if the yeah. if the if the opposition you're playing are really good defensively and are absolutely exceptional on the counter attack and that's what they rely on, you can't. You've got to be. You've got to use your nose so and not get sucker punched. And so, on that moment, we're going to have to call it quiz because it's, we're, we're into uh, injury time at the end of the show. But it's been an absolute pleasure, gents. I've really, really enjoyed myself tonight. So um, everyone out there, who if you've enjoyed this, um, Ryan is very active on Twitter, as uh, as he's mentioned. Uh, his, his Twitter tag is on there, and he'll always engage in a good old debate about football. So, Ryan, thanks for being on the show tonight. Well, thanks, really Ryan, and it. thank you for giving me an opportunity to vent about all this as well. So I feel a bit better about myself now. <laughs> well, that's good. And, and Mel, Mel does uh, a lot of work now, um, all sorts of his writing books, and he's, he's a uh, performance expert, performance analyst, as you can see the sign behind him. Mel's a really active guy. He's available on social media as well. And if, and, you, and if you want to go to meleves.com after my name, M-E-L-E-V-E-S.com, you can get a free copy of my book, The Three E's, How to Obtain, How to Achieve, sorry, Optimum Performance. There you go. Well worth it. Well worth a read. To well both worth of a my read. Guests, it's to only both a very... of my guests, go on. That, well plugged. To both of my guests, I want to thank you. If you've enjoyed tonight, share it around your social media. Help us to get this kind of platform out here where we can get more conversations going on. Don't forget next week, Andrew Jenkins and Lawrence Fox talking about wokeness. I'm sure that should be uh, rather lively. Uh, but from now, from everyone here as head to head, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to the guests. Have a really great evening and goodbye from all of us. <laughs>